Hi, today I wanted to talk about my control panel. The latest one is this one here. It uses uh, two um, panels, uh, the, uh, yeah, LED panels from um, MGP Molam. And um, originally, I was I had the board. I made this board here, and here there's a line for each one of the tracks in the yard, which is this yard here. And then I have a bunch of LEDs. Let's say three LEDs were for each track. Then, and I would have my select the routes. So I'm selecting routes and not the individual tracks because the problem I find a lot of people, they make their panels and then they have um, two lights and a switch for each uh, turnout. So in this case, if you have 10 turnouts on each side, 20, you know, 40 lights, 20 uh, switches, you're flipping up and down. If you, if you, you know, if you flip the, you know, you want this top route, let's say, and you forgot to flip one of the turnouts, uh, you're gonna have a problem. And then the, the other um, issue is that they're putting the LEDs and they're wiring the LEDs either to the switch or to the decoder, left and right. And uh, that's a problem because, you know, the lights will come on, but then if you're missing, uh, you know, if the route is not complete, it's gonna it's gonna give you a problem. You're you're not gonna see the the proper indication. In this case, what happens is when I press the button, it's the circuitry goes and it tells all these turnouts to flip, and then the the turnout decoder itself from, which is a local net device from also from MGP. And what they those ones they get a feedback to see if the turnout was actually flipped, and only until the, the it's true that the, all these turnouts are flipped the way you want it, then the light will come on. So it's not based on the fact that you press the switch, because again, if you if you have it connected to the switch and some turnouts are not connected or whatever, you press the button, the light will go green, and uh, and it says you're good. But in reality, you're not good because. As I said, there's no feedback. So in this case, these panels, they require, they work on the feedback. So that's the positive thing with this. And in this case, it's all green LEDs, as you can see here, and it would select, show me the route. But then I would have another panel like this, identical, but with L red LEDs, and those would be connected to the uh, uh, local net uh, block detector, uh, current sensing block detector. And then that would show up which blocks are red. So then I would have to refer to this one to show the routes, and then the other one, because uh, this one's using green LEDs, the other one's using red LEDs, and then that one would show me the block occupancy. But then I, but then the other thing was uh, in the back here. It's hard to see, but originally I needed four of the MGP decoders because each one of the MGP decoders can operate uh, 21 LEDs, uh, 21 RGB LEDs, or 64 independent LEDs. So because I had so many down here in the yard. And then these ones, I would need four for this panel and then four for the other panel. And um, I decided that was that was just about too much work. And then the, the other thing is when you buy these boards, uh, they're cost effective, JLC, PCB. You don't have to buy one, you buy, let's say uh, five or, yeah, I think in this case I bought five. So five boards, it was econ economical. So it makes sense to have, uh, you know, um, more boards. And by having more boards, I was able to build this one here. So, uh, and you could put them around the layout. So when, what happens is when, when you update this board, because it's local net, they'll update the other board. And, and you know, if you have two, three boards, it'll up, update them all. Uh, and these are RGB LEDs. So again, they could be red, green, blue, or yellow, pink, whatever I want to do. And um, in this case, this version here, I required three, um, of the MGP decoder uh, decoder boards. And the reason for that is because instead of having a track, a whole row of lights for each one of the uh, yards, I have one light for each yard here. So that ended up reducing from four boards. Well, I went down to three boards and as you can see, it's a smaller size. But then the other, then I ended up going to um, a version, which is this version here, which requires only two boards. The reason for that is because, let's say these three LEDs on one block are all connected together, and then these three are connected, and so wherever then these two are connected, these two LEDs are connected, these three are connected, these three are uh, one is here, two are connected here. So by doubling up and tripling up some LEDs, 
I only needed two uh, MGP decoder boards. And uh, they also do 16 uh, switches. And I needed, uh, so 30, so I had a maximum of 32 and I think I only need 30. So I was good as far as that. So, and I, I was able to even shrink the board to this size. See, this is exactly the size of the two boards. And these are, this is a new version that they have that they're producing with the black uh, PCBs. And these ones, uh, you can either power them from like here, you see there's five volts power, or you can put these jumpers and then end up powering them from the local net connection. So now only local net comes in. And if your command station or whatever it is, standalone local net uh, power supply is able to handle, then it'll uh, power this guy up. So it's incredible how now it, uh, it reduces to this size, this whole layout where I, where I needed two boards. And uh, this one, it, it gives me uh, the same thing. And even more because now I could change the colors. I have, uh, like if you look back over here, I have a, a route that goes up along here. So this is like, a, goes higher up. So when I select that route by pressing this button, see the LEDs, because it's the, uh, mountain line we'll call it uh, the lights go blue so now I could tell that when it comes from the green here and it goes to the blue it starts this is going uphill then I have the choice of these two yards it comes around here goes around I have a choice of these two comes around here comes around here comes around and then now it comes back down and it goes through the yard so uh, yeah blue is showing me that it's the mountain line uh, green is showing me that the route is selected Red is, is, it's occupied, so the block is occupied, but it's not selected. Just like here, these routes are all occupied. As you can see, there's locomotives here. They're showing you occupied. And then if I select, uh, I'm not sure if it's showing well, but these, these lights are red. My camera looks a little yellow, but they're red. But then if I select this, if I choose to select a route that is, uh, see now this one turned to yellow. So this one went off, which is great because, you know, it could only go to one of the tracks in the, in the yard. So whichever one I pick, if I select this one, it'll go green. And now it's verifying all the turnouts are flipped. If the turnouts are not flipped in the right direction, it'll come back. The feedback will say it won't come on. So then it's, I know that there's a problem. In this case, it's green. So I know that everything was switched. In this case over here, I have a choice between this one and this route and this route. If I select that one, this one goes out. If I occupy the route, like let's say the train's gonna come around here, I'll put something on the track here. I occupy the route. See the light will turns to yellow. Might be hard to see, but that's yellow. Um, if I sell this yard here, if I end up making that track yellow, you see if I, I uh, in this case, I would have to put a locomotive on the track, yeah, because this is the DR5088. So when I put a locomotive on the track there, see that light will go yellow. The locomotive is off. I'll bring it close to the light. See, if I take it off, the light goes green. I put the locomotive, it goes yellow. Same thing down here. It's yellow. Take it off the track, it goes green. So now it's not only is it telling me the route, but it's also telling me uh, if that the, it's occupied so that's uh, that's how that's working and the other thing I wanted to talk about was signals because the other problems that most people have is you know they're installing signals like this <coughs> you know red and green and they connect it to the uh, the outputs let's say they use um, some uh, decoders like a DCC concepts, concepts decoders where you can connect the alternate power to like a frog or you can have the use the built-in switch well the problem with that is when you flip the turnout in the right direction uh see like in this case i can flip this guy uh let me see so i'll take that route or the other route will be green but the problem is you know when the locomotive goes you know in takes that track in this case let me just put it let's see i'll put the train here locomotive on the track see so this is the track for that for that signal there see it's red switches to red take, take it off it's green 
a lot of a lot of folks they just have the light goes green and if there's a lo uh, a locomotive between this you know this signal and the, the next signal it's it's still green so it's like that, that's that's useless you have to have uh, something that where the lights not only do they go according to the uh, uh, turnout the route it should also go according to uh, block occupancy and then again they might have a um, uh, red and green and not yellow and the problem is with the yellow is it's the block ahead okay so what i'm showing here is the the top searchlight is telling me the main uh, track and the bottom one is the diverging route so in this case i'm selecting the main track so it's green if i flip so which is uh, you can see here it's the main track this way if i flip to the diverging route then the top one goes red and the bottom one comes on green. So I'll switch back. Right, and then now if that block ends up getting occupied, which it actually goes in the helix and then it comes out here. So I'll just put a locomotive on the track. So there's a locomotive on the track. When I come back here, see both lights are red. Because, which means don't go in that tunnel. Now, if I move it to the next section, which is after this turnout, I move it there. It's the next block. See that light, which was yellow, goes to green and uh, red, and then this one goes to yellow. That's a yellow aspect. Might be difficult to see, but because yellow is a combination of green and red, so I'm getting a yellow signal here. So this is very important where the, um, you know, you have to know what the block ahead, you have to have block occupancy also connected to these lights and not just have these lights triggered by a turnout. Uh, the other thing is if, again, since see the train is, the locomotive is taking the, the, uh, the, diverge, uh, the main route, that's considered the main route. This one here on the right is diverging. If I switch that turnout to the other side, you see the signal goes, the bottom signal goes green because it's taking the diverging route and the diverging route is not occupied. So even though there's a train sitting there, you know, it's not, it's on the main route, it's not on the diverging route. If I put it on the diverging route, then it would end up showing as being occupied. See, in this case, I put a wet finger there to show resistance. So that light goes red. If I ended up putting, let's see, if I, let's put that locomotive there. So that's the following block after this signal. So here, the uh, diverging route is selected, which is the bottom light, and that's actually yellow because there's a locomotive, not in the current block, but in the, uh, the next block. Which is sitting right So uh, this is what's important about the signal. So just like here, there's some signals and uh, you know, down there is, is a signal. It might be hard to see, but down there is a signal. So the signals have to be able to talk to each other and you, to use the yellow lights. See, in this case, see down here, I end up having a yellow light because one of the routes is not coming to this signal or sorry, the block ahead is occupied. This block is not occupied, but the block ahead is occupied. So, the, you know, there's a locomotive there, so that guy goes yellow. So, uh, anyway, this is uh, what's important is you have to kind of remember that when you're connecting the uh, the LEDs, you know, try to minimize on the switches to show routes and not just individual turnouts. And um, because it's local net, this panel is updating, a, you know, the same panel, which is on the other side of the layout here see there was a locomotive there that guy's yellow i'd switch to the inside track over here this guy's blue if i switch to that one it'll switch and then on the other side they'll tell me and then the other thing is this all this information is also going to jmri so you can trigger it there to and trigger it here and then the other thing is i have some individual switches that are on the side here and these are red green and uh, yellow again rgb so this guy is red, may look yellow, but it's red. I select the route. 
just like this root. Now it goes to yellow because it's selecting the root and there's also a locomotive there. You see there's a locomotive there. If I move the locomotive off the track, that guy turns to green. So again, local net devices, feedback, everything is talking to everything else. Everything is updated the other boards. There I'm using a, a ESU ECOS. So that one's being updated as the other ones are being updated. In JMRI, if you if you put the switches in JMRI, they will update these panels too. So again, it's all it's very important. Use some local net uh, devices, give you some feedback, uh, and use uh, minimum switches. Uh, use uh, the feedback will tell you know make sure that the if the, if the um, information is correct, the routes, and then the decoders themselves, the turnout decoders have feedback. And, and they're pretty advanced. You can uh, update uh, all the information in the, uh, in, the in the decoders. It's not just simply, you know, it turns left, it turns le right. It's giving you information and uh, it's updating uh, all the devices. The other thing I wanted to point out was uh, if you're using boards like this that have uh, surface mount technology, you can, you know, set up the board where all the wiring, you know, obviously the wiring is done. So you end up having a thin board like this and you just, you know, solder in the, uh, the two decoders and that's it. That's all you got is, is this thing. Whereas uh, when you're using this kind of board, I had to uh, uh, solder in the LEDs. And here you have all this work that you have to do. You have to make sure, you know, these, these uh, solder joints are tiny. There's four wires for every uh, LED and you cross them uh, too much solder you got problems so you, again you have to solder in all these switches you have to solder in all the uh, LEDs whereas uh, if you have it uh, done on surface mount well you get away you get the uh, finished product right away and as I was saying before when you place an order you can order like uh, two boards uh, ready-made or uh, you have to order five boards two boards with the with the parts so uh, what's neat is uh, because they're local net and they talk to each other well you can have the boards in other places on the layout if you ended up making uh, I don't know somehow destroying something or whatever well you got spares so that's what's uh, good about uh, the surface mount technology Okay, that's enough rambling. Thank you. Bye.